Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to Sarnet Television. We're going to take a look at a product that Chris is going to take it apart. It is the SN SL5. Take it away, Chris. Well, thank you, Stuart. I happen to have here our SirenNet SN SL5. It's part of our LED spotlight family. This is our 4-inch spec, so par 36. We also have the bigger 6-inch heads that are designed for retrofit into Unity Spotlights or any other 6-inch housing that you may have on your application. This here can be used in 4-inch rubber housings as a pedestal mount. We also have flanges that can be used to affix it as well. So with this fixture here, commonly it would be used as fog light mount or scene light mount, DOT, law enforcement, fire and rescue service, or even for yourself as a volunteer or off-road enthusiast. Polycarbonate front lens here, as you can see, extended off the front, so domed as opposed to flat. Black cast powder coat housing. So really with this here, the fins act as a heat sink for the fixture itself. Gore-Tex breather, which allows for air movement from inside the fixture to the outside. And on the back here, we have two posts that have been epoxied into the cast housing here. The posts are designed to affix your trigger wires. So with that, a lead and a ground. The neat thing with this head here is that the posts are not specific. Lead here, ground here, comes alive. If I flip flop it, same thing. So on your install, ground, lead, either post. So what I'm gonna show you with the light head here is how it disassembles, so removing the front lensing and then giving you a better view of the diode board and how it's laid out inside the fixture. So to get us started, take the bit, take the Makita, and I'll go ahead and remove the screws in the cast housing here. And like some other screws that you've seen in the take it parts, green epoxy here, so it helps to seal the screw into the hole in the cast housing. On the front here, the lens is seated on, so small flat tip screwdriver, and go ahead and start working around the edge to free the lens from the cast base. And what the screws here do is not only they tighten it in, but they pressure hold it on as well. So with that, again, breaking the pressure that's holding the lens on. Lens itself here for the front face. As you can see, black rubber seal incorporated. So again, keeps condensation, grit and grime from getting inside here. From here, you'll notice an array of dot optics and an extension on the front as well. So with this, the extension and the dots, this allows the diodes inside to give a better and fuller output in the fixture itself. From here, I can go ahead, remove some small Torx screws, again, change the bit over, and I can remove this polycarbonate lens piece as well. And again, UV resistant, UV resistant. So they'll stay nice, clear, and fresh for you for years to come. From here, and go ahead, pull the ring out. Torque screws, total of five. And here is the internal lens portion. Optic here, etched in, and then an hourglass dishing on this portion here. So what this does is it takes the small diode and takes the output and turns it into a larger circle. 
So again, with the way the optics are done in this ring here and the outer polycarbonate lens, it allows for the diode output to be manipulated. So again, more full, more intense for your spotlight. The board inside here with the diode array, as you can see, total is six, one in the center, five around the outside, again, matching the optics in the ring. The board inside here has actually been epoxy filled into the cast housing. So from here, there's no further way to take the fixture apart. But again, in the manufacturing process for us, it makes for a very rough and tumble and longevity based fixture, because after all, this is gonna be going on the exterior for the application. So with that, the internal electronics are all epoxy sealed. Posting here, you can see on the inside, from the back outside, again, all epoxy sealed. So as you can see, very, very well put together. And what I'm gonna do here, since this is off, this is off, I'm gonna go ahead, connect power to the post, point it toward the screen here, so you can see how the fixture outputs here, and then is manipulated to a better output, again, with the optics. And actually something before I point it at you, blind the camera, is with the output on, you can see a small dot through the Gore-Tex breather itself. So the dot, in turn, very, very hard to see, I don't even know if we can focus in as much, right here below the diode, small hole that's put in specifically for the Gore-Tex breather. So the breather is one way, covers it from the backside here, so the air inside is allowed to go through the center hole here. So again, part of the heat sink function and longevity. So with this, now pointing at the screen here, you can see it's really just a big wash. There's really no tight spacing, so really just gonna give you a great big ring of white that's not really gonna do anything to assist you in focusing or lighting up what you're trying to see. I'm gonna go ahead, disconnect the clips. So now that you've seen it in its broken down state and also how it works without the lensing, go ahead, do a reassemble and then light it up again so you can see how the beam is completely adjusted. One thing to notice on the housing, there's a small step. On the small step, that will match up to the step here on the lens. And in turn, for remounting, we'll go ahead, align this so that the hourglass optics are aligned over the diodes and also the screw holes fit in for where the screws will drop in to hold the lensing into the housing. So with that, I'm just gonna go ahead, spin it around to get it realigned. So there we go. And as you can see, for the screws that'll affix here, notch, notch, notch on this side. So again, make sure everything's lined up and then go ahead, reassemble. Retightened in. So what I'll do is before this goes on, light it up, point it toward the screen, so that way you can really get a three-step effect for raw, internal, and then outside cover. Again, toward the screen, 
So you can see beam has gotten more tight, more focused. So you can actually see the center spot. So very, very useful with the optics. Again, take the outer portion here, realign on the edge, and go ahead and give it a squeeze. And as you can see, with the pressure, when the screws go back in, that will take the gap here and completely seal it. Now with it tightened back in, you can see the space between the edge of the lens, the internal gasket, and the housing is completely sealed. So again, reassembled. And there you have it. Blind the cameras, because what fun would it be if I didn't get to do that? Now you can see, again, toward the screen, definite spot for the intensity, and then a spread outward. So again, this fixture here is designed for a flood output for your application. So as you can see, nice and effective. Again, not as bright as it's gonna be in the studio here. After all, it's daytime, the lamps are on around me, but for a nighttime application, this will definitely light up the scene so again, fire and rescue, DOT, law enforcement, or for off-road enthusiast, absolutely a wonderful fixture to use. So again, our Sirenet SN SL5, four inch spotlight fixture, how the unit disassembles, a look at the internals, and then also how the optics assist in manipulating and tightening the beam for a more effective fixture. I'm Chris. Thanks for joining me here on Sirenet Television. Back to you, Stuart. Well, thanks, Chris. Greatly appreciate that taking apart of the SNSL5. It's always interesting when Chris takes things apart. You've been watching Sirenet Television, and I greatly appreciate it. Have a great day.